Hello everyone, welcome back to Radiology Math Easy, your all-time favorite YouTube channel. Let's see how to approach a chest x-ray today. Hi, welcome back everyone. Today we are going to start a new series in radiology that how to approach series. So in that series I am going to describe about uh, approaching chest x-rays, approaching abdominal x-rays and ap approaching bone x-rays. So those are important things in radiologies before identifying any pathologies. The first topic in our approach series is how to approach chest x-rays. So this is the frontal chest radiograph of skeletal mature female patient. First of all, identification of the patient is important. So this is the name of the patient, this is the age, this is the gender, this is the BHT number and this is the X-ray number. So those are five things in identification of the patient. Next thing is the projection, whether it's a posterior or anterior that means PA, that's where we project radiation posterior to anterior of the body or AP projection and usually we take the standard projection is posterior anterior in in a erect position next thing is the side here you can see they have marked the side left side so it's important identifying the, identifying the side because patient, there will be patient who has dextrocardia and situs sinuses so next thing is exposure adequate exposure of the body and adequate exposure of radiation those are the two points in exposure Here you can see that's exposure of the patient you can see the first rib you can see so adequately exposed and also you can see the costophrenic angles first rib and the costophrenic angles you can see so it is adequately exposed usually you have to take c7 to l1 level L1 or you can D2, D12 level you have to expose and lung epices should be seen clearly and costophrenic angles should be clean clearly seen <coughs> next thing is also it's a inspiratory film you can see you can see uh, posteriorly 10 ribs but in case 9 to 10 ribs yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, yeah, roughly 9 ribs you can see, 9 to 10, you have to see, that means it's adequately inspirated view, that's a good x-ray, and also either 9 posterior ribs, so 9 to 10 posterior ribs, so anteriorly 6 ribs, here you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it's a adequately exposed film and inspiratory. Next thing is radiation exposure. You have to see the peripheral soft tissues whether it's overexposed or underexposed. If it is underexposed, this will be whiter. If it is overexposed, this will be darker. Now the technical method seeing the exposure of radiation is the posterior vertebra, posterior lower thoracic vertebra. If they are seen very clearly, that means overexposed film under the cardiac shadow. If they are not seen, that means underexposed film. If they are fairly seen, it's an adequately exposed film. So though they, that means they have, they should be seen faintly. So it's a good film. So that finishes the exposure factor. Next thing is the breast shadow. You have to think, find out. Here you can see the breast shadow. It's important. There are a patient with mastectomies. So identifying breast shadow is also an important thing. Then the lines and tubes. Here you can see the tra trachea. The endotracheal tube usually has two lines and it is located between the T1 to T3 level or 2 cm above the carina. And uh, NG tube also important. It goes like this and will be positioned in the stomach or in the gastric available so usually it has three rounded opacities at the terminal end so that's the ng tube and endotracheal tube and also et tube or tracheostomy tube also will be there it's like rounded ring and goes like this it's the tracheostomy tube 
and also other tubes intercostal tubes they come like this intercostal tubes with double lines and they have holes so those are the intercostal tubes then you have to check for the lines so central venous line usually tip is located in the SVC like this goes like this and also pacemakers goes like this and in the right atrium pacemakers like this and also in children you have to look for umbilical arterial and venous catheters umbilical venous catheter is like this this tip is located at the junction between right atrium and IVC or at the level of diaphragms and umbilical arterial catheters usually located at uh, D6 to D10 level those are the things in children then the, now we are going to start the chest x-ray interpretation proper so actually you don't need pneumonics to keep in mind those things the simple thing is you go from central to peripheral I didn't find the structures at the center then go to peripheral first look at the important thing is this trachea you can see the lucency centrally in the mediastinum central linear lucency so lower part is slightly shifted to the right side and this is the carina usually located at D4 level and these are bronchi right main and left main bronchi and the different next thing is uh, so in, this is the superior mediastinum you have to see the widening of the superior mediastinum there will be masses which cause widening of the superior mediastinum it's also important find out the length of the superior mediastinum or the width of the superior mediastinum then next thing is uh, the heart it's important to find out the position and position and shape and size of the heart position shape and size all those three things are important position shape and size and the position is usually the you have to see the the right heart border is one third from the midline and the left heart border is two thirds of the midline so that's the normal position of the heart from the midline right heart border one third left heart border two third so the next thing is the size of the heart the size of the heart uh, we measure from the midline the finest process right uh, you have to measure the maximum length of the right heart border and the maximum length of the left heart border and maximum diameter of the chest wall you add these two things the maximum sizes lengths of the right and left heart border and divided by the maximum size so diameter of the chest wall it should be less than 50% in adults and less than 60% in children so that's the size this is the normal shape of the heart and also the borders of the heart right atrium from the right heart border yeah right heart border and the inferior border is mainly formed by the right ventricle partly by right uh, left ventricle and the left heart border formed by left ventricle and this is the left auricle so those are the borders then the other borders you have to look for so this is the pulmonary trunk so this is the SVC border medial to that ascending aorta this is the aortic knuckle and also this is the descending thoracic aorta and here you, will, you might see the brachiocephalic trunk this region brachiocephalic vein and the brachiocephalic trunk then next thing you have to see is the hyla this is the left hilum this is the left hilum 
so this is the right hilum this is the left hilum the difference between the height of the right and left hilum is about 2 uh, cm this is the normal hilum so 2 cm the distance hilum structures are usually pulmonary vessels artery vein you see these uh, pulmonary arteries mainly and lymph nodes are also there so if there's prominence you have to suspect lymphadenopathies the pulmonary arterial hypertension like this so this is a normal pulm pulmonary hyla vessels and this is the interlobe artery you can see and uh, now you have to find out the pulmonary vasculature yeah, this is the pulmonary normal pulmonary vasculature yeah pulmonary vasculature and uh, now let's talk about the lung parenchyma this is the no, lung parenchyma periphery there is pleura you have to look for the pleural thickening so horizontal fissure goes like this oblique fissures are like that and uh, you have to see whether there are more loosens or pacifications is in the lung parenchyma so that's the lung parenchyma and in pneumothorax uh, will be collapsed peripheral vascular margins are not there in pleural effusions the costophrenic angles will be obliterated these are cardiophrenic angles so that's what you have to look for the lung parenchyma then next thing is the diaphragms you can see the diaphragm right and left hem diaphragm the difference between height of right and left hem diaphragm is about 3 cm right diaphragm is higher 3 cm than left one the one so you see right and left hem diaphragms their position other thing is the gastric cap bubble you have to look for here you can see gastric cap bubble that's a normal position it is important in identifying sighted in invasions and uh, calicia cardias we have to find out gastric cap bubble and also esophageal atresias in children it, it will be absent the next thing is uh, soft tissues yes you can see the soft tissues yeah soft whether there are soft tissue swellings the final thing is bones find out the ribs here you can see the posterior ribs the anterior ribs the clavicle with companion shadow sometimes they include the shoulder joint you can find out shoulder dislocations and joint arthritis and also the thoracic vertebra is also important pedicles you have to look for the intervertebral disc spaces you have to look for and para those are the things so in addition to those i mentioned you can look for additional lines in the chest radiographs this is the right paratracheal line this is the left paratracheal stripe this is the si esophageal stripe and this is the paraortic line so and these are para right paraspinal line and left paraspinal lines so in mass lesions these there will be swellings of these lying so lines and deviation of the recesses so this is a si esophageal recess so those are the things you have to look for so that concludes how to approach in chest x-rays and please subscribe our youtube channel in how to approach series and you will get notifications of our new videos thank you everyone thanks for watching please like and subscribe for more videos like this